Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. Brad watched the video on his laptop in grim silence. On the screen a petite, mature blonde woman entered the room, wrapped tight in the arms of a tall, muscular man. Her short hair was fixed in a playful, curly style he was familiar with. The woman was smiling. As she ran her hand across her lover's chest her expression filled with anxious delight. The guy was tall and much younger than her. He had dark, short cropped hair, broad shoulders, and a narrow waist. Brad estimated the guy was a few inches taller than him, and about the same weight. But when the guy pulled his shirt over his head and threw it to the floor, it was clear he had very little fat on his lean, well-defined physique. The passionate couple barely entered the room before the young man began kissing her. She offered no resistance when he undressed her. Brad bitterly recognized the matching bra and panty set. It was the sexy ensemble Marie wore last month on the night of their anniversary. Being their 25th anniversary, he wanted to make it special. So, after a nice dinner with their daughter and her husband, Brad took his wife dancing at an expensive nightclub. After sharing many romantic dances, they procured a room at a nearby luxury hotel. They were pleasantly inebriated and made love as they had for the past 27 years, 25 of them man and wife. Brad savored the memory of that night. His wife's slender body was erotically revealed when Marie slid out of her dress at the foot of their bed. She smiled invitingly as she performed a sexy dance, then twirled around playfully, displaying her new matching undies. He was very pleased with her choice, because the rose color material seemed well matched to her flawless, pale white complexion. Now those cherished memories were ruined, while rose in his throat as Brad forced himself to watch the rest of his wife's betrayal. Carrying her like a child in his strong arms, the tall man walked across the small room and unceremoniously dropped her onto the sofa. Undeterred by the rough handling, Marie scrambled to a seated position and deftly undid his pants. The guy had a smug, triumphant look on his face as he watched her servicing his bloated manhood. He took particular note when the man dropped her on the sofa and stood there waiting for her to make the next move. Clearly, she knew what was expected of her, and she didn't disappoint. Soon, she was face down on the back of the sofa, facing away from the camera. He couldn't see her expression but knew she must be frantic when the man grabbed her short hair yanked her head backward and held her petite body in a sharp back bend. Holding her in that strained position he was having sex with her. Her mouth was hanging open and spit was dripping from her lips. She was a mess but wasn't offended in the least. Her glistening face was twisted into a weird smirk, clear evidence of her demented pleasure. Brad never realized there was such a wanton side of her personality. He always considered her a respectable wife and rather inhibited. The relaxed marital sex they enjoyed was gentle and loving. In the afterglow of their sweet love-making Marie always expressed how pleased she was with their tender relations and the care with which he treated her. Afterward they'd cuddle and Marie frequently mentioned how contented she always felt after they made love. What he was watching now was nothing like that. More of a primal rut than tender love-making. There was no tenderness at all. Just pure animal screwing by a guy trying to get his small wife. This video proved she was receiving something from this guy he could never give her. It was depressing. But from the twisting, thrashing motions his wife was performing on the arm of the sofa, Brad knew it was true. He was concentrating so intently on the video he barely noticed his cell phone beep, indicating he had a text. It was his wife. He paused the disgusting video and read the text. Going straight to the store from work. Want anything special for dinner? Brad texted back. Nothing special. See you when you get home. He was going to type, love you, at the end. But after watching her blatantly violating their marriage vows, his heart had turned bitter cold. She texts back, Okay. See you at home. Love you, baby. Yeah, right. He whispered bitterly. He checked the time and knew she'd be home in about an hour. Marie is 52 years old, working as an administration assistant a few miles away at the admissions department of the local community college. She's worked there for a few years after leaving her previous job as a secretary for a small company. She goes to work later than Brad and gets off later. So, he's usually home before her if he doesn't have to work overtime. Brad Kendallson is a 55-year-old financial analyst, working at his firm for the past dozen years. His job is stressful at times. Some of the firm's customers are well-off businessmen, understandably concerned about their finances. So devotes all his energy and concentration to his clients during working hours. He also has to travel on occasion, which was why he finally found out about his wife's cheating. A few months ago, he just finished one of his required business trips to a nearby city. He usually took a plane, but drove this time instead of flying. It was close enough from home, 
and took about the same amount of time. On the way home, decided on the spur of the moment to stop by the old cabin he and Marie owned to check on it. It was a small, rustic, one-bedroom vacation cabin in the hills, 45 minutes from their house. It had electricity, a working well, a small propane stove for cooking, and a fireplace for heat. Other than that, it was without any other amenities. Her late father used to own it, and her mother left it to Marie after she died. Since they acquired it, they only stayed there three times in ten years. The last was two years ago, when they stayed there for a quiet weekend of solitude. Since they almost never used it, Brad was thinking about selling it. He knew they wouldn't get much. It's not in the best condition, but was located near a scenic lake on one acre of land in a small cluster of similar cabins. Unfortunately, it had no security, only a chain-link fence stretched across the dirt road leading to the group of cabins. A retired farmer owned the land and built the small community of cabins, selling them to fund his retirement. Brad simply wanted to take a few minutes to make sure no one was squatting at the property or broke in and wrecked the place. As he drove up the long dirt road, he wondered who would want such a remote, rustic cabin. Maybe some hunters or an old couple like them that would use it for a weekend getaway. They kept a key under a specific rock in the garden, and Brad used that key for entry. Once inside, he checked the water and found that the well was still working properly. It was when he used the bathroom that he noticed the shower curtain was not pushed all the way to the side of the tub. It was unusual because he specifically remembered pushing it all the way to the side the last time they were there. The sink also had faint soap stains around the drain like it had been used. The stains were faint, but they were there, and he knew he had cleaned it before they left. Suddenly, Brad's radar was up. Someone must have been staying there since he and Marie were there two years ago. He continued his investigation and found that nothing was broken or missing. But Brad was sure someone had moved some of the chairs around the kitchen table. There were a few minor things different in the bedroom as well. He checked around the grounds but didn't see anything else unusual. There were faint tire tracks in the dirt driveway. But it was impossible to figure out how long they'd been there. The other cabins were all empty. Except for the tracks in his driveway, it looked like no one had visited the tiny community in years. After half an hour of checking, Brad was wondering what to make of it. Maybe there was a simple explanation. Did Marie come here and forgot to tell him? It was hard to believe that. He was sure that if she was here, she would have mentioned it to him. But he had to believe that someone was here. If a squatter broke and why wasn't a window broke? Or a door forced to open? Why wasn't the fireplace dirty? Or the countertop? Why was nothing that much out of place? Certainly, if roughnecks invaded place, they'd have left it a mess and wouldn't take care to put everything back in its proper place. The shower curtain was nearly in the right place, just not pushed all the way to the side of the bathtub. Whoever had been there had taken time to make sure the cabin looked untouched. It was only because of his fastidious nature that Brad knew exactly how he left it. For some strange reason, he decided not to tell Marie. He wasn't normally a suspicious person, but something didn't add up. He didn't know why he felt like that. He trusted his wife. He loved and trusted her for decades. But it was just too strange an occurrence to eliminate the possibility that she had some knowledge about this and wasn't telling him. If he confronted her now, he didn't want it to sound like he didn't trust her. Since it was just a hunch, he needed more information before asking her about it. After that strange visit, Brad went to the electronics store and purchased an expensive set of high-definition surveillance cameras. He mounted them in discrete locations, one to view the porch area one in the living room that would also view the kitchen. The last one was placed in the bedroom, pointed so it could see into the bathroom if the door was open. Without telling Marie his plans, Brad began driving to the cabin each weekend to check the recordings. Since he could drive to the cabin and back in two hours, it was easy to give his wife some trivial excuse about his absence. Actually, she was gone more than he was, shopping or visiting friends. She also spent a lot of time at the health spa she joined last year. She started a rigorous exercise program resulting in losing almost 15 pounds and toning up her slim figure. Brad had to admit that she did look good for her age. The video cameras were motion activated. So, the first two times he went to the cabin there was nothing recorded. He was beginning to think he was just wasting his time checking them. But on the third visit the cameras had data. He was so curious who was breaking in, he downloaded them right away and began to view them at the kitchen table before leaving for home. His heart turned to stone when he saw his mature, bottle-blonde wife and a tall guy half her age get out of a sports car in front of the cabin. They were smiling and laughing like old friends as they walked up to the door hand in hand. As she did many times in the past, Marie retrieved the key from under the rock and let them in. 
Brad's fists were clenched as he watched them enter the living room. The door was barely closed before he grabbed his wife, and they began making out like horny prom dates. It was another evidence of his wife being a 304. That was the first adulterous recording Brad witnessed. It made him nauseous to watch her acting like such a 304. He didn't throw up, but he was disgusted and very upset. He sat there in shock for a bit, before finally leaving the cabin in a haze of disbelief. He made sure that everything was the same as when he arrived so Marie wouldn't know he was here. He had every reason to believe this wasn't the first time she used the cabin for sex, and he suspected it probably wasn't the last time either. He made sure the cameras were still working properly and left with his heart broken. Of course, every fiber of his being wanted to go home, strangle his wife, shoot her lover, and burn down the house. During the ride home he managed to get his anger under control, at least enough to think rationally. Until an hour ago he didn't have the slightest clue she was unfaithful. He loved her unconditionally and always assumed she felt the same toward him. They often discussed cheaters, and Brad thought she felt as he did about adultery. Now he knew different. He knew he needed more information before going nuts. His late father always told him not to react it blindly without thinking. But his dad never had to handle something like this. How could she do this to him? All the way home Brad racked his brain for some tiny shred of hope for his crumbling marriage. As the miles went by, disturbing questions filled his mind. Was this the only time she cheated? The familiar manner she behaved with that guy made it doubtful. But what if it was? The recording had no sound, so he didn't know what they talked about. Did he really want to trash a 25-year marriage over a one-time lapse in judgment? She had been a great wife up until an hour ago. At least he thought so. He knew he hated her, but at the same time he still loved her. That's why her betrayal hurt so much. One question really hit him in the gut. If he divorced her, how the hell could he ever replace her? He was 55 years old for gosh sakes. He's a bit overweight, not wealthy, and certainly no stud. He wasn't bad looking for his age, but it was clear his bedroom skills weren't enough to keep his wife faithful. Of course, Marie could still attract guys and it seemed she had. The sick video was proof of that. Marie was still a nice-looking older woman with a good figure. There were probably lots of guys that would love to be with her. But how about him? At 55, he wasn't such a great catch anymore. The prospects for him being able to find someone like her again were negligible. It was with these thoughts in his head that he arrived home. Thankfully, Marie wasn't there. She left a note on the table saying she'd be out shopping for a while and wouldn't be home until dinner. Brad ripped up the note in anger, wondering bitterly if she was just out cheating with that a-hole again. That was over a month ago. Since then, he retrieved two more videos of her having sex at the cabin. The latest was the one with her getting screwed silly on the arm of the sofa. It was no one-time mistake because all three videos were of her having sex with the same guy. Once he had the first recording of her affair, Brad managed to keep his cool. He forced himself to behave normally around his wayward wife. Now that he knew she was cheating, he paid a lot more attention to her clothing, what she was doing, and where she went. He made it a point to find out as much about her daily activities as he could. Brad decided against a private detective. If things went as he hoped, he didn't want anyone to suspect he knew about her affair. He just put a GPS device in Marie's car, and when she went on her daily errands, he tracked her on his computer. Other than going to work, all of her activities were shopping trips to the grocery store or to the mall and other normal errands. After watching her for a week, he didn't think her affair was with someone at her job. He took a day off a couple times and followed her after she left work. She always went straight home except on her workout days. Other than shopping, the only place she spent a lot of time outside of home was at her health spa so he zeroed in on that. For the past few months, Brad realized his wife had substantially increased the amount of time she was working out. Now he knew why. Brad was actually pleased when she mentioned she was joining workout class at the spa. He encouraged her and after a couple months saw definite improvement in her muscle tone. She always had a trim, slim figure, ate right, and was never overweight. But after a few months of steadily working out, she had lost a few pounds and achieved a noticeable toned body. He complimented her on her determination to maintain such a rigorous workout. What a fool he was. Now he suspected the health spa as the source of her affair. The guy on the video was certainly a gym rat, proven by his muscular, well-defined body. Brad made it a point to follow her from work and got there before she arrived. He watched her enter and could even see her working out, because the building had large windows in the front and was well-lighted. He sat in his car parked at a discreet distance and saw her interacting with the staff. It didn't take long to see how friendly she was with a particular young guy with short, dark hair and an impressive build. 
Brad snapped some pictures with his digital camera. He waited for her to leave the place and watch when she walked out the front door. The young guy went with her, and they exchanged a few words as they stood by her car. It was a friendly conversation and seemed normal. They were quite comfortable chatting and whatever the guy said had Marie cracking up. She placed her hand on his arm as they talked. When she was about to leave he slipped his arm around her waist and gave her a quick peck on the cheek. Marie was smiling as she gazed up at him with an adoring look. Brad drove home, locked himself in his office and looked up the guy on the spa's website. His name is Oscar Pitford, 28, employed as a personal trainer. The next few days found Brad sitting in his car in front of the spa. He saw Oscar flirt with Marie whenever she arrived and he paid her a lot of attention when she worked out. He also escorted her to her car when she left. It was obvious they were very familiar. The guy seemed to flirt with multiple women and was no doubt a playboy. Marie seemed to be his cheap and easy target. Despite the age difference, Marie was a decent-looking mature woman. He probably flirted with her during her workouts, found her agreeable to his advances and pursued her. Once they were involved, it was no doubt Marie's idea to use the cabin as their love nest. Brad grudgingly appreciated a shrewd wife's choice. Using their house for her affair was obviously dangerous due to nosy neighbors. Brad was there so often there was the chance they would leave some telltale evidence of their cheating. A motel would leave paper trail. If the motel was local, someone may see them enter or leave and report it to her husband. On the other hand, the cabin was remote, free, and located far from home. Marie knew her husband never went there. As long as she kept the place in pristine condition, Brad would never know about all the hot sex she engaged in there. It was a perfect place for an affair. If he hadn't decided to check on the place after his business trip, he still wouldn't have any idea of his wife's betrayal. During the week since he acquired the first video, Brad somehow managed to conceal his bitterness. It was difficult not to just slap some sense into her. The only way he controlled himself was to leave the house whenever he felt himself losing it. Despite his anger, he was determined not to reveal his secret just yet, to give him time to make the arrangements he needed. After watching the latest video with Marie perched on the arm of the sofa getting screwed silly by that shithead, he was seething. He had somehow managed not to explode on her even after after watching how eagerly she was letting this a-hole use her. It was obvious she had no intention of ending it. On the contrary, she seemed to be relishing her adulterous activities more than ever. Realistically though, even if she had ended it Brad doubted, he could handle living with her anymore. From the first time he saw her cheating, he couldn't see how their marriage could survive. He couldn't imagine why she was treating him with such disrespect. No matter how many times she may apologize, Brad didn't think he could ever get over his anger. Of course, hiding his knowledge and maintaining a normal lifestyle did give him time to take precautions. As a financial analyst, he knew how to protect himself in a divorce. He had hit a substantial amount of money, making it unlikely that she would ever get half of their wealth. He would have liked to leave her penniless, but knew from experience that wasn't possible. He tried to figure out a way to ruin his wife and cause violence to her lover. But such a drastic option just wasn't realistic. He wasn't normally a violent person. And the cops were not fools. Any overt violence perpetrated against Piff Ford or his lying, cheating wife, and they'd immediately suspect him. He was bitterly and nearly insanely angry. But he wasn't a super sleuth, an ex-CIA agent, or a mob guy with criminal contacts. He was just a working stiff trying to do the best for his family. A normal bloke stuck with a wife that seemed to need more than he could offer. He planned his revenge carefully and then planned to divorce her and try living as a single man. Not a pleasant thought, but what else could he do? He heard a noise and knew she was home. Brad felt his stomach tighten when he heard his wife's car pull into the garage. He had to work hard to force down his anger to appear ignorant, playing the role he assumed for the time being. She entered the kitchen from the garage and Brad was on guard. He used to love having her come home, knowing she was his lover. Now that sense of desire was a bitter contradiction. As usual, she looked great in her tight blue skirt, high heels, and a thin sleeveless blouse. The outfit was very professional and appropriate for her job. It was subdued, but stylish, and displayed her slender, toned arms and legs and her curvy shape. He always thought she looked like a sexy mature librarian, with her short, permed hair, attractive body, and pretty smile. Hi, honey. She spoke. How you doing? She walked in with a bag of groceries under her arm. She strutted across the kitchen set the bag on the table and leaned up to him for a kiss. Hi, Marie. He accepted her kiss on the cheek. Are you hungry? She asked. Cause I'm starving. I bought some steaks. Why don't you heat up the grill and I'll fix a salad? Brad answered pleasantly. That sounds good. 
I'll get it started right now. He pasted a placid look on his face and went out on the deck to handle the grill. It was more difficult to remain normal after watching her latest sex video. He used to love it when she got home so they could eat, share their day, and spend the evening together. Now he stopped seeing her in such a favorable light and her presence was upsetting. He didn't even consider her a wife anymore, just an aging bimbo, like some nasty old spicy star getting regularly power-drilled by her young, big lover. Still, Brad had to admire her acting abilities. After demeaning him the most revolting way a wife can, Marie came home each day with a smile on her face, a relaxed attitude, and a loving facade. If you didn't know better, you'd assume she was a typical traditional wife, the same faithful wife he always thought she was. Of course, they were both playing a role, but she was so much better at it. For him, the strain of putting on such a fake show was nearly unbearable. Dozens of times over the past few weeks, he nearly cracked under the pressure and exploded his anger on her. Somehow, he managed to hold himself back. It was fascinating that she was able to compartmentalize her conflicting lives. On one hand, she cheating on him regularly. Once home, she pretended to be a normal, faithful wife, as loving and attentive as she ever was. Brad could discern no visible effect of her affair, no evidence that she was now giving her body away, fornicating regularly with a young guy with a big tool. What was more confusing is that Marie was offering him regular sex now, where before her affair he had to practically beg her for sex. Now she was sliding next to him in the bed, stroking his back, whispering encouragement before they went to sleep. He even found her stroking his erection in the morning before he woke up, encouraging him to relieve his frustrations before going to work. Brad knew she was just providing a pity sex to her clueless husband, probably to soothe whatever guilt she might be feeling. But after watching her in action with that young stud, he doubted there was much of any guilt now. In the past, he always considered her a truthful person. But now she's acquired the talent of being able to lie very convincingly, able to conceal her affair without a hint of deceit. Brad finished cooking the steaks and they ate with little conversation. They spoke briefly about some trivial topic. But for the most part, their dinner was a quiet affair. Marie seemed a little tentative. She ate sparingly and kept glancing over at him as if trying to read his thoughts. Brad simply stayed quiet because he didn't trust himself not to say something that would give him away. They sometimes had coffee and dessert after their meal. Not today. Once he finished eating, Brad needed to get away. He quickly cleaned up and went to the living room to watch TV. Marie came out soon after with a glass of wine and sat down on the sofa next to him. Feeling her eyes on him, Brad wished he'd just gone to his office after dinner as he sometimes did. It would look suspicious if he got up and left now. Is everything okay, Brad? She asked during the commercial. Brad felt his stomach not up. She suspected something. He tried to keep himself from tensing up. He flashed a smile and answered calmly, I'm fine. You seem a little tense today. She rubbed his arm and asked in a sweet tone, Is something at work bothering you, honey? I get that way too sometimes. If there is, you can tell me about it. You know I'm interested in what you do. His voice cracked a little as he replied, No, I'm fine. Really? He should end the discussion right there. But the urge to say something was overwhelming. Why would you ask me that? He said, keeping his eyes glued to the TV. I don't know. I guess. I don't know. She snuggled close, stroking his arm affectionately and commented, Maybe we need some time. You know. I mean we haven't been together in a while. Brad choked out. Really? Yeah. With a giggle she blurted out, I miss you honey. I'm starting to wonder if you're still attracted to me Brad. She said it as a joke and chuckled to make him think so. But after decades of making love there was no way either of them thought that. She acted funny when his responding chuckle sounded forced. She looked at him with concern as he warbled. You. Uh. No I am. They both laughed nervously. But it didn't sound humorous in the least. She turned her attention back to the TV and both of them sat in silence. Before her affair Brad hinted for sex regularly and most of the time, she refused his requests. He never thought too much about it. On the rare occasion when she came on to him, he never refused her. Not once. Of course, her hints were more subtle than his. A smile at the right time a suggestive touch, or a playful kiss as she fell onto his lap was all it took, and he was following her to the bedroom like an eager puppy. It was so easy before. Now he knew she was passing her body around to other guys. Once he was eager, almost frantic to get between her thighs. Now he held back. Since her offers for sex were so rare, the lack of sex wasn't that noticeable. But after so many weeks without any loving between them, even Marie was starting to realize their sex life wasn't just infrequent, it was non-existent. They were living like roommates now, 
not lovers, and she was starting to realize that. Brad was afraid he wouldn't be able to hold out much longer. They haven't had sex in weeks, and knowing what she was doing behind his back had him horny as a goat. She was super horny with her lover, but had never been promiscuous with him. In the past, it took her quite a while to get horny enough to let him have her. When she did allow him and turned on the charm, he was putty in her hands. Now with her sleek new body and all her new sexual experience, she could be very enticing. Thank God his plans were nearly complete. Despite her suggestive behavior tonight, Brad was determined to hold out. He wasn't going to compete with her new lover. Any sexual activity between them would leave her disappointed. He was sure of it. After watched her wild reaction to the a-hole's body, he knew she never behaved like that. Over the past month, he simply forced himself not to respond to her. If she made a suggestive comment, he simply acted like he didn't hear her. In bed, he kept as much distance as possible between them and pretended to go right to sleep. Realistically, he knew he couldn't keep ignoring her. They had always enjoyed an infrequent, although decent sex life. He used to think so. But after watching her going wild on the video, he totally lost confidence that he could satisfy her. Sure, she'd pretend to love him and probably would fake a climax. But it was all a lie. He didn't want to be in an unfavorable situation trying to give her what he knew she wants, and he couldn't provide. She never came as violently with him as she did with Pitt Ford. He knew she never would. Next to him, Marie sighed and said, I just thought you might, you know, want to go to bed a little early tonight. Are you tired? No, silly. She giggled, playfully slapping his arm. I'm not. I mean, do you want to, you know, go to bed now, and maybe, you know. Yeah, he knew. Brad could feel himself starting to sweat. His body was stirring, and he could feel his face getting red. He knew she was watching him, wondering why he wasn't acting normally, responding favorably to her obvious offer for sex. Maybe in a while. He finally replied in an even tone. Go on up, honey. I want to watch this show for a bit longer. She snorted with disappointment. He could feel her warmth pressing against him. The smell her hair blonde hair and the spicy scent of her perfume was intoxicating. He knew what she had to offer and couldn't forget how delightful she was in bed. He tried to ignore his longing and didn't look at her face so he couldn't see her confused expression. He wished he could switch off his desire for her. But after so long loving her, it was impossible. She turned her attention back to the TV, confused by his reluctance. Her ego was a bit stung by his rejection. Brad thought to himself, let her feel rejected for once. The show hadn't yet finished when Marie let out a long yawn. She stretched her arms over her head, purposely allowing her shirt to pull tight against her chest. It was a gesture designed to get him to notice her. Tonight, he just kept staring at the TV. When he didn't react to her suggestive stretching Marie's side, oh well, I'm a little tired, honey. I guess I'm turning in now. You want to come up? It was a blatant offer he hadn't heard in years. I'll be up soon. He replied indifferently. Oh, okay. Just wake me when you come up. She said, adding, I probably won't be asleep right away. All right. See you soon. She gave him a long, hard look, kissed his cheek, rose up from her seat, and went to the bedroom. Brad breathed a sigh of relief. He stayed in the living room for three hours longer. It was after one o'clock before he tiptoed to the bedroom door, peeked in the room to make sure she was sleeping before removing his clothes joining her in bed. Sleep was difficult, and he woke up early, still feeling tired. She was still sleeping when he slipped out of bed, gathered his clothes, and went to the guest room to dress so he wouldn't wake her. He was frustrated but held on to his pride. He wasn't going to screw her while she was cheating. He longed for the old days when he could just slide next to his wife initiate relations and make passionate love to her without the mental baggage. But she had started this shit, and he wasn't going to reward her by acting normal. If she wanted to have sex so bad, go see her a-hole and get her holes plucked. She chose to be his toy, and it wasn't his job to make her happy anymore. The atmosphere around their house grew tense. Marie was confused and wondered if something was amiss because she and Brad barely spoke. He did speak to her at times, usually during dinner. But there was little affection and he never initiated physical contact anymore. If she hugged him, he would stiffen up. Other times he would flinch if she touched his arm or shoulder. Something was bothering him but he wouldn't say what. She tried to draw him out, but he just deflected her concerns or changed the subject. She used to feel his love from his actions and kind words. Now she knew they had lost an important connection. She never found him this difficult to talk to. The next night Marie made another attempt to seduce him. As before he acted indifferent, she wondered if he knew about her affair. 
but quickly discounted that possibility because she and Oscar had been so discreet. Only the people at her spa knew that she even knew him. During her workouts, they acted friendly to avoid suspicion, but behaved properly. Whatever physical contact they enjoyed was away from the spa and anyone they knew. Any sexual pleasure she received from her young lover was reserved for her the visits to her father's old cabin. Marie was concerned about Brad's behavior, but not overly so. She still loved him, and if he was having an issue, she wanted to be sympathetic, and it did her best to be there to confide in if he wished. Whatever was wrong, she never assumed it would jeopardize her marriage. It must be some problem at work, she thought, a situation that came up occasionally. She was disappointed they hadn't made love for so long. She had to believe that he was getting horny, but that wasn't her fault. She offered herself more in the last month than she had in years, and she certainly wasn't horny, not with all the incredible, out-of-this-world sex she had with Oscar. Even so, she didn't want Brad to feel neglected and wondered why he didn't want her anymore. Was he no longer attracted to her? That didn't seem possible. She was in better shape than she had been in years. He was getting older. Maybe he's already losing his sex drive and wasn't interested in sex anymore. It was ironic that with Brad's sex drive cooling off, hers was heating up. Lately, she was attracting young guys by the dozens. Her new improved figure hadn't gone unnoticed by any of the men where she worked. Being around college guys most of the day, Marie was getting hit on regularly. So many guys were chatting her up, she had to be careful to maintain a professional distance and not lead them on. With her lover on the side, she was getting her cravings satisfied, but wanted her husband to be happy too. Their relationship had never been very exciting in the bedroom, so she wasn't too concerned that he was acting distant. She would just continue to be the loving, consoling wife she always was with Brad and save her erotic sexual cravings for her young, hot, well-endowed lover. Marie knew her affair would cool off eventually, but at the moment it was still going hot and heavy. Whenever she had a chance, she'd meet Oscar up at the cabin, where they would enjoy a couple hours of exciting, passionate sex. Then she'd clean up and return to her normal, rather routine but secure life with her older, unsuspecting husband. Once she and Oscar finished having sex, she'd clean up everything making sure nothing would give away their time there. In the remote possibility that Brad might visit the cabin, she insisted on using the sofa, the kitchen table, or the floor, anywhere that she could clean up easily. They never had sex in the bed, where the chance of a stain could implicate her. It was a perfect situation, and despite Brad's strange behavior, she wasn't giving it up. As the next week went by, Brad's apathetic attitude bothered her. She wondered if he suspected something was wrong, and decided to take a break from her affair, just for a while until her husband got back to normal. She told Oscar they needed a break, and he was disappointed to hear that. He thought she was worried about nothing, but went along anyway. By the second week of their break, she was having trouble keeping her mind off sex. She found herself day dreaming about the cabin, longing for Oscar's rough sex. She didn't want to get involved with any guy besides Oscar, but working at a college meant she was around young, attractive men all day. She found herself fantasizing about men she knew at work and was starting to feel vulnerable to any good-looking guy's attention. Before her affair, Marie barely noticed the men she worked with. She was not a very physical person and didn't concern herself with sex too much. But since she started cheating, engaging in hot, regular sex with a young, experienced lover, she found she couldn't live without it anymore. When her cravings grew to an uncomfortable level, she decided to end her celibacy. During her weekly workout, she let Oscar know she was available again. She made it clear she wanted to restart their affair, and he was ready as well. They kept their distance from each other that day, maintaining a facade of respectability. When he escorted her to her car, the two lovers made plans to meet the following week to resume relations. Brad mentioned some business meeting that day, giving her a few precious hours to sneak away. Marie went home with a spring in her step and a twinkle in her eyes. She felt her whole attitude improve as she spent the evening with her husband. Dinner was once again rather quiet. There was nothing she could put her finger on, but Brad seemed more somber than usual. Conversation was subdued, but she ignored the feeling that there was anything unusual about that. He's been distant for weeks now. He didn't seem to want a physical relationship with her anymore. But with the prospect of hot sex next week, she put her frustrations aside. As Brad moped around the house and seemed to be avoiding her, Marie gave him his space and tried to keep the atmosphere between them friendly. Her good mood continued into Friday at work. Even her supervisor commented on her upbeat attitude and asked what it was all about. Oh, nothing special. Marie replied smiling. Everything has been working out for me lately. 
I'm just pleased with how well my life is going right now. Did Brad get a promotion? Or did you hit the lottery? The woman asked with a chuckle. Maybe you're having a second honeymoon or something. Whatever it is, I haven't seen you this contented in years. Nothing like that. She replied with a sly smirk. I am happy about my home life and Brad has been wonderful. I appreciate everything I have and just realize how lucky I am. Things aren't perfect, but they certainly could be a lot worse. That's a great attitude. I wish everybody thought like that, Marie. Marie went home after work, feeling on top of the world. She couldn't wait for her meeting with her lover in a few days. She was so horny she wanted to take a shower the second she got home to cool down her body. The smell of something delicious was coming from the stove when she walked into the kitchen. She was quite pleased that Brad already had dinner prepared for them when she arrived. She gave him a big hug and was pleasantly surprised when he hugged her back and kissed her cheek. This is wonderful, Brad. She gushed as she appraised the meal. Would you like some wine with dinner, honey? Yes. I'll take a glass. She said, adding suggestively, but I don't want to get too sleepy because I want to reward you later for making such a delicious meal. Your smile is reward enough for me, darling. Oh no. She giggled. I'm going to give you something a lot better than a smile tonight. It's been a long time since we've been together, and I want to show my wonderful husband how much I love him. Brad pasted a smile on his face and replied, I think you're wonderful too. They ate and conversed normally for a change. Marie was pleased that Brad seemed to be coming out of his shell. She found the dinner and pleasant chat a welcome relief from the somber tone of their interactions lately. Later, after cleaning up the dishes, which they did together, husband and wife went to the living room to watch some TV. It was their regular routine. But tonight, with her upbeat attitude, Marie was determined to seduce her husband. It had been weeks without a bit of physical contact and she missed it. Despite his age, Brad was still an attractive, healthy man, no doubt with sexual needs that weren't being met. Despite having a lover on the side, she still wanted to satisfy her husband's needs and was determined to do just that tonight. Thank God he's in a good mood for a change. She touched Brad's arm and excused herself during a commercial. She went to the bedroom and undressed to change into more revealing clothing. She knew he loved her in skimpy clothes. She pulled a thin tank top from the dresser along with a pair of tight shorts. The tank top would leave her thin arms and shoulders bare and the shorts fit tight over her round hips. Feeling naughty, she removed her bra and left it off. She put on the skimpy top. She started to put on the shorts and decided against it. Wearing just a thin, tiny top, filmy bikini panties and nothing else, even her indifferent, uninterested husband would have to be turned on. She looked in the mirror, smiling at how alluring she looked. Her erotic reflection was proof that even at her age she looked hot. She was positive Brad couldn't help being aroused. One look at her made it obvious she was in the mood. With so much on display and with her eager attitude, there was no way he'd refuse her tonight. With a wicked smirk on her face, she could hardly wait to join Brad on the sofa and pranced out of the bedroom. Her mind was set and she headed back to the living room to seduce him. Brad was in the kitchen when she returned. So, she sat down on the sofa and assumed a sexy pose and waited. He came in the room with a beer and another glass of wine for her. She flashed him a seductive smile and patted the seat next to her. His eyebrows raised when he saw what she had on. She could feel the tension building in her loins as he returned to his seat next to her. I filled your glass. He told her, handing her the glass. I hope you wanted more. Yes. I'm sure in the mood for some. She said, trying to give him as many hints as she could. I'm in the mood for something else too, darling. I can see. She said with amusement. She knew she looked enticing and available. Knowing how alluring she looked was getting her pretty worked up. She rarely felt so horny for her husband, so tonight was probably the most attraction she felt toward him in months. She could only imagine the reaction Oscar would have seeing her like this. But while she wanted her husband to lust after her, she didn't want to look too needy and throw herself at him. It was important to her ego to let Brad get the hint first. So, she sat next to him, giving him plenty to look at, flashing all the green lights she could, hoping he'd make the first move. Instead, he just stared at the TV. After a while, she moved closer. The TV droned on as she sipped her wine and tried to press herself against him. At one point, she let her head fall onto his shoulder and she began to rub his arm. She knew he had to realize she was ready, but why didn't he look at her? It was during the next show that she began to feel tired. She was frustrated with her indifferent husband and tried to remain open to any move he would make. The voices on the TV were boring and the wine was making her sleepy. She didn't know that Brad put a sleeping pill in her wine. 
It wasn't long before Marie was having trouble keeping her eyes open. Pretty soon she dozed off. It was dark when she woke up on the sofa. There was a blanket on her. TV was off and Brad was gone. What the hell? She mumbled sleepily. The clock on the wall said four in the morning. Still half asleep, she got up and stumbled into the bedroom. Brad was in the bed sound asleep. Damn him. She cursed softly. What's the matter with him? Without changing into her nightgown, Marie crawled into bed next to him, feeling very weary and quickly feel asleep. The next day, she was bitter about his lack of attention. She gave him every chance to have sex and he just blew her off. His loss, she thought angrily. She got up and realized it was nearly noon. The sun was already out and Brad was in the kitchen. Morning, honey. He said as she entered the room. Want some coffee? Yeah, sure. She answered blandly. What happened last night? You fell asleep. He told her smiling. I guess you had a hard week and you were tired. You looked so sweet I didn't want to disturb you. You should have woke me up. I know. But, well, you know. He replied ambiguously. By the way, Marie, why don't we get away for the weekend? Get away? Yeah. Let's go up to the cabin for a couple days. He suggested with a grin. We both have been working hard lately and haven't spent much time together. Marie was still sleepy and a little confused. She took a sip of her coffee and tried to clear the cobwebs from her brain before answering. The cabin? We haven't been there in years. I know. But we could use a little time together, you know. It's so quiet there I bet we can have a lot of time to reconnect. And you know, have some fun. Fun? Marie's mind cleared and her eyes suddenly opened. Was he hinting about having sex? After leaving her hanging last night, she wasn't expecting this. Fun, huh? Yeah. Brad chuckled. I know I'm not that romantic. But if we got away from our normal routine, maybe something would click. It's just for the weekend because we both have to work on Monday. But it could be fun. How about it? She shrugged her shoulders. I guess so. We have to go to the store and get some things. I already have everything we need. I went shopping yesterday. Well, aren't you the Boy Scout? Always prepared, I see. She giggled. Yeah, have to be prepared. He laughed back. I think we should just clean up, dress, and head on out. Let's start our weekend right now. Marie was becoming more anxious the more she thought about it. Why not? A weekend away in the woods with her husband might get their loving relationship back on track. The way he was talking, she might even get to seduce him. Okay, let me get changed and I'll pack a bag. Great. Brad exclaimed, grinning eagerly. I already have my stuff packed. I'll put it in the car, and we can head out shortly. On the way to the cabin, Marie tried to use her cell phone to send and text and found it wasn't working. Oh, darn it. She said, punching buttons on the phone. I thought it was charged up, but I guess the battery is dead. That's okay, sweetheart. You can use mine if you want. No, that's okay. It's nothing important. I'll just wait until we get to the cabin and charge it up. Okay. An hour and a half later, they were in the cabin putting the food in the fridge and making sandwiches. Marie was happy but was a little tentative. As she entered the small cabin, her eyes were daring around, scanning the place for any indication of her affair. But as she and Brad made themselves at home, she didn't see anything unusual and he didn't notice anything either. They finished the food, then took a walk around the lake. They talked and laughed and savored the beautiful surroundings. Brad held her hand as they walked, pointing out various things he wanted her to see. He even hugged her a couple times and caught her once when she tripped. He was friendlier than he'd been in months and Marie was thrilled. It was so nice she almost felt bad she was going to be cheating on him in this very place in a few days. The afternoon was terrific and the evening even better. Marie hadn't felt this close to her husband in a long time. Once they were back in the cabin, she took a chance and kissed him. He didn't refuse her affection. When it grew dark, Brad put on some music and they opened a bottle of wine. As they drank, he told funny stories about events in the past years of their marriage. Marie was pleasantly high from the alcohol and tried to interest him in holding her. When he accepted and his arms wrapped around her slim body, she felt her body begin to tingle in anticipation. The romantic atmosphere continued when they went to bed. Instead of lying apart as they did at home, tonight they lay side by side, gently kissing and stroking each other. Marie was very excited at the prospect of finally having her husband make love to her. It's been so long. Please, honey. She purred, parting her legs invitingly. Don't play with me anymore. I'm yours. Go ahead and take me. I'm so ready. You are. He teased. God, yes. I could scream. Can't you tell? She tried to concentrate on her husband. But she couldn't help comparing this slow, relaxed, 
romantic love making with the unbridled sex she shared with her lover. Both were exciting and enjoyable. But what she was enjoying right now was more fulfilling. Brad loved her so much and was showing it with everything he said and did, including what he was doing right now. On the other hand, Oscar just wanted sex. There was no love involved between them, she knew that. He just wanted sex. During their time together, the young guy simply pounded her as if she was a brainless blow-up doll. She enjoyed the young man's attention but had to admit she'd never trade that for what she was experiencing right now. She wasn't sure what time it was when she heard a noise outside. It must have been nearly 10 o'clock, which was early for them to go to bed. But out here in the sticks, with no TV to watch, going to bed early seemed proper. A moment later, there was another suspicious noise. Her ears perked up and she felt Brad stiffen and sit up. What the hell is that? He whispered with alarm. Is someone outside? I don't know. She whispered back. There was another noise. It sounded like someone was on the porch. With wide eyes watching the door, Marie sat up next to her husband. She was suddenly afraid. What are we going to do? She whispered. Brad pushed the covers back and crept quietly out of bed. You wait here. He told her firmly. I'll go check it out. Suddenly the door knob was rattling and Marie's hand went to her mouth. She was scared to death as Brad moved to his bag and removed something. Before she could see what, it was, she heard the front door swung open. Her eyes bugged out as she saw a dark shadow of a figure at the door and realized it must be a home invasion. She screamed in panic. The next second there was a bright flash and an ear-splitting blast. A second later there was another blast and Marie realized her husband had shot the invader with a pistol. From the bedroom she heard the man grunt and topple over on the floor, grabbing at his throat where the bullet had hit him. She screamed again unable to believe what was happening. As she sobbed, the room was quiet. Oh my God. She cried out, her hands over her face. Brad moved cautiously toward the downed man. He held the pistol trained on him as he moved forward. After a moment, he touched the man's neck to check for a pulse to see if he was dead. He moved cautiously to the open door and went outside to make sure he was alone. He came back in, went to the light switch and turned it on. It was at that second when her life changed. Marie's brain swooned. Her eyes widened in shock and her heart stopped. The dead man on the floor was Oscar. She was sobbing and nearly incoherent when Brad came to her side. He pulled her head to his chest to console her and whispered softly, It's all over now, honey. Don't worry. We're safe, Marie. Her thoughts were jumbled in confusion. Her husband held her gently, whispering things to calm her down. We have to call the police. He finally said after a few minutes, They're going to want to investigate this as a crime scene. Just stay here. Marie collapsed on the bed sobbing uncontrollably. Brad gazed grimly at his sobbing wife, waiting patiently until she went to the bathroom to throw up. She was still in the bathroom when he retrieved her cell phone, opened it up, and pulled the tape off the battery contacts. Then he put it back in her purse. He went to the body and removed an envelope from the dead man's jacket. Inside the envelope was a note. It was a note Brad printed at a library a few towns away and placed on Pitford's car earlier in the morning. With a bitter expression he read, This sex coupon is good for tonight only. Please bring it with you and redeem it for an evening of crazy sex. Sorry for the short notice, but I just found out he's away this weekend. Can you meet me at the cabin, lover? I hope so, and I'll make it well worth your while. Signed, your devoted 304 Marie. He wadded up the note and went outside. Her lover's car was in the driveway. The cabin was in a dead spot, so it was hard to get a good signal for cell phone use. He called to his wife. Be right back, Marie. I'm trying to get the cops, but I'm having trouble getting a signal. Let me go out back and see if I can get through. He moved quickly to the lake. He walked to a place he knew was totally concealed by shrubs and light the note and envelope on fire with a lighter. He watched the paper turn to ashes, making sure there was nothing left. He then rubbed the black ashes between two rocks and covered it with leaves, leaving no evidence of his deceitful ambush. He took a moment to gain control over his emotions. He had never killed anyone before. He knew it would happen when he placed the note on Pitford's car this morning. But the act of murder was emotional. He regretted killing the guy like this, but with the rage he'd felt for so long, knew it was inevitable. His hands were still shaking as he made the 911 call to the police. It was now up to him to keep his nerves steady and let this play out. He had already removed all of the surveillance cameras and hidden the videos in a place no one would ever find. It was lucky he kept knowledge of her affair to himself. Once the cops began to question his wife, it would all come out. Even if she didn't admit it, it wouldn't be long before the cops would discover she was a member of the health spa where he worked. 
and her connection to her lover would be established. The police arrived in less than an hour. Brad was waiting for them and admitted he was the one who shot him. They took his pistol and placed it in a plastic bag as evidence. When they asked, he assured him that he hadn't moved or touched the body since the shots were fired. His wife said the same. The cops were immediately suspicious when they found out the invader used the hidden key to open the door. How did he know it was there? Brad explained about the key but pleaded ignorance. But when they questioned Marie about it, she broke down almost immediately. She admitted she and Pitt Ford had been here before. Brad pretended to be shocked and must have played the role well because the cops began flashing him pitying glances. They were both taken to the station for questioning. The forensic team showed up not long afterward and went over the cabin one inch at a time. At the station, Brad called a lawyer he used on occasion. At the lawyer's instruction, he told the police he wouldn't say anything more until he arrived. Murray, on the other hand, spilled her guts. She was so distraught over the death of her lover and confused how it had happened, she lost all control of herself. The cops used that as leverage to get her to admit all the details of her months-long affair. Brad didn't mind her babbling. She didn't know anything about his ambush and couldn't reveal anything incriminating. After a long night and part of the next day, both husband and wife were released, but told not to leave town. After weeks of questions and investigations, nothing incriminating was found about the shooting. Brad knew they were suspicious, but without evidence, they had to categorize the shooting as a justified homicide. Breaking and entering one's home in the middle of the night was certainly a crime. Any jury they could convene would consider it self-defense. Even if there were unexplained questions, the jury would give the homeowner the benefit of the doubt. Brad took his wife home on Sunday. She was a mess and apologized profusely for cheating until he finally told her to shut up. He already knew about everything, of course, and managed to keep a confused look on his face as she blurted out all the sorry details. He was sorry having to end the young man's life. But he couldn't see another way to get rid of the creep and regain his pride. He went to work on Monday, leaving his wife to confront her own demons. She was a basket case when he got home. One of their neighbors was with her to keep her from going nuts. That evening after a brief dinner, he confronted her about the affair. She sobbed the whole time, and she went through all the typical excuses an unfaithful wife utters when caught. It was just sex. It wasn't love. She loved him. She would make it up to him if he'd forgive her. Please forgive me, I beg you. Blah. Blah, blah. All of her typical excuses went in one ear and out the other. He had her served on Thursday at home. She still hadn't returned to work and nearly collapsed when she was handed the divorce documents. Brad figured losing her husband and her lover in the same week must have been overwhelming. She was so distraught he took her to the emergency room to have her checked out when he couldn't calm her down. Brad packed a suitcase with Marie bawling like crazy. She kept begging him to stay and forgive her. What am I going to do now? She sobbed. With little concern, he replied, I have no idea. We're going to divorce Marie. You're not my problem anymore. But I love you. I can't live without you, Brad. When she kept on pleading, Brad finally told her cruelly, just go find another sex buddy, Marie. You seem to have no trouble finding them. Just make sure it's one with a big tool like that a-hole you were screwing. That bitter reply had the poor woman sobbing inconsolably. He left the home that weekend never to return. Brad was never charged with a crime. But the authorities were still watching him and asking people he knew about the homicide. With the cloud of suspicion hanging over his head, his career suffered. No one wanted their financial assets handled by a possible criminal. He finally did leave his job, but found another one not long after and was paying his bills. They sold the house and the cabin. He and Marie split the profits. He had half of the money from the marital assets, as well as the money he hid from Marie to support himself. But with her lawyer checking his records to find out why their combined assets weren't more, he had to maintain a lower standard of living and kept a sharp lookout for anything that could be incriminating. After the shooting and the divorce, life for Brad went on. He bought some weights and started an exercise program at home. Soon his muscle tone improved and began to lose weight. He kept in touch with his daughter and visited her when he could. She was very upset how their marriage ended and tried to get him to reconsider the divorce. Brad told her gently but firmly that will never happen. After cheating on him for so long, there was no chance to reconcile with her. Despite his concerns about his attractiveness, Brad did find women to date. They were older, but so was he. Some were even quite attractive and were nice to be around. It took him a few months to get up the nerve to ask one out. But it was a relief to meet people, socialize and enjoy female company again. He didn't want another long-term relationship just yet but he had a career and many good years to live. 
even at 55, he could still attract female attention. During the months after his divorce, he wasn't as lonely as he thought he'd be. Unlike his gradual transition to a normal existence, Marie's shock at what happened turned into depression, and it took her a long time to get over it. Her easygoing attitude about sex, life, and love was gone. Her husband, who she still loved, divorced her. Her young hot stud was dead, and she wasn't able to keep her emotions under control enough to find another. The robust sex life she enjoyed before her divorce disappeared and wasn't coming back. She was seeing a therapist regularly, who had her on medication that was helping her cope. Her health was fading, so their daughter got her under a doctor's care. She stopped working out and gained quite a bit of weight. She mostly lived the life of a shut-in and never went back to the spa that started all of her troubles. Brad heard from friends she was moving out of state to flee all the cruel gossip about her affair. Dear listeners, please share your thoughts in the comments section and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.